Hi, welcome to the third program in the Art in Arlington series. In this program, we meet John C. Doyle. John Doyle is a resident of Arlington and he has a studio at the Arlington Center for the Arts. I met John at his studio and he showed me a number of his paintings. John paints a variety of topics ranging from still life to outdoor life to paintings of sculptures that he's created. In fact, one of my favorite paintings is of a sculpture that he created that consists of an item that I'm sure many of you encounter on a daily basis. Thanks for watching and I really think you're going to enjoy meeting John. He's a fascinating guy uh, with a very interesting history and, and, and his explanation for the way that he creates his art I think will make you appreciate you know, the art that you will see much more deeply. Thanks again. Well, John, thank you for joining me. And, and I think it's going to become apparent to everyone really soon that, that um, Arlington probably isn't the place where you were born. Where are you from? And uh, how did you end up in Arlington? I'm from Ireland originally. And uh, I came to Boston in like early 90s. There's a lot of Irish people coming to Boston. So I had a network here after I came out of college. I came to Boston and uh, lived in various towns around the way. But I've been in Arlington now for maybe 18 years. My wife and I live here. So Great, great. Yeah. So, so how long have you been an artist? Um, I came to art late in life. I, was, I probably didn't take my first art class till I was uh, 30. I kind of had a early life crisis. I, I, I studied engineering in school, computer engineering, and I worked in high tech here for uh, maybe eight, eight, nine years. I kind of got interested in art, started dabbling it, and then I, 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 I left my job and started studying art uh, full time. I took a break and then went back into high tech, and then, and, and then I actually quit for you know, five, six years and did art full time. Great, great. So, uh, so I, I checked out your website, mm -hmm. and, and I'm very impressed. To be, it seems like you specialize in painting, That's and, right, and, yeah. and, uh, and I, I have always been impressed with people who paint things. In, I mean, I like abstract art, mm -hmm. but then when people who paint things that look like real life mm -hmm. um, entities, I'm just amazed. You know, and so, so um, uh, maybe you can show us some of your art and, and why you chose to paint what you did and tell us the story behind it. Sure, Anything sure. you think would be interesting? Yeah. Um, so uh, one, one person I studied with uh, years ago said that, you know, art, art is, is when, you, when you do art, you paint your life. Um, whether that's abstract or realistic or, or um, what he's specifically talking about painting. Um, and that kind of rang, rang, rings true true for me and I don't know I, I, I related to this guy because he also studied engineering as an undergrad and then went off and did art so I think we had a s similar foundation you know and, and maybe that's also what attracted me to realism so I think a lot of my 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 pieces reflect like my life um, they're kind of almost like little uh, diary entries little sketches of, uh, of like if I'm doing a still life it's things that I own or things that I have and how I relate to them um, if I'm doing a landscape, it's places that I love to be in or, or things that, you know, uh, places that I like to visit. So uh, this piece here is actually um, a collection of old boots that I had. And I, 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 need, I was moving apartment. I needed to get rid of some stuff. And I had a difficulty throwing out these boots. I, I, I probably brought some of these from Ireland with me. I know I did actually. So I had them for a long time and I had a sentimental attraction. Um, and uh, I, I, was, I was also thinking about, you know, I was, doing f I was working full time as an artist at the time and I wasn't making any money and we just had two kids and I was thinking, oh my God, that what are my ki what's my kid, kid's legacy gonna be? And then I was thinking it's gonna be this box of old boots, you know? So, um, I, that kind of was the seed for this this the, this painting. It, that, that it refers to that part of my life where I was kind of like struggling to balance, you know, having an, a young family and and the expense of that, and trying to make it, you know, make it as an, an artist. Um, so the name of this piece is "Someday All of This Will Be Yours." So I kind of, in my mind, I was imagining, um, you know. 
bringing my kids down to the basement and showing them this box of boots and saying, here's your legacy. So I, I set it up and it, it, it um, they're actually, footwear is very interesting to, to paint. I've, I've, I've done other uh, pieces of footwear because it, it, it kind of takes on the personality of the person. And even though it's an like, inanimate object, it, it, you know, people, the creases and falls and everything, it tells you a little bit about, about where the, the footwear has been. So it also allowed me to actually, when I was when I had painted them, because a lot of these boots were ripped and everything, it allowed me to to get rid of them. You know, I kind of, I kind of made that this, if you like, this annotation captured the sentimentality, and then I was able to let go of the actual objects themselves. So, That's interesting. Yeah. So, so then, um, so, am, we're looking at the piece now. Yeah. And is this how the boots were? when you painted them or is this from your imagination and kind of like a composite of the boots that you put together in the painting? This is actually how they were. I would have set, I would have set them up like this. Um, and I, when, when, I was, when I'm doing a still like, the, like this, I'll often spend actually, like once I get the idea, I can spend several days setting up the still life. It's almost like setting a stage. Uh, you know, stuff can collapse. So these boots would have been stuffed with sculpture wire and like, t you know, tied, this is tied open. So I, I definitely put some time into like designing the layout of the boots. It's not, even though it looks like they're just thrown down there randomly, it's, it's not random. So every kind of part of it is constructed. You know, the way it stuff flows in and out of the canvas, you know, the, it le leads you in and out. Um, uh, and you know, where, where I need, this area was too dark, I needed, you know, the boot to open up and give a bit of color here. So, you know, I, I actually, this is actually tied open. And similarly here, so it's, it's difficult as well to paint uh, dark shapes. You know, the boots are black and, and ox blood. There's not a, not necessarily a lot of things you can see there. So you have to kind of find ways to to get them to poke out of the darkness a little bit and create the form and the edge and stuff like that. So I, I really enjoyed painting this, and I, I still I still love looking at it. So that to me is always kind of a benchmark for me of whether the piece was successful or not. Is if I don't mind not selling it, you know what I mean? It's like it's in my house and I, I kind of, I still like to look at it. Right, yeah. right, I got it. And, and you know, part of the reason that I'm doing this series is because I enjoy talking with artists and understanding how it is that they go about making their art, especially since I'm not a painter. So you see still life and you kind of feel that, oh, they just put it up there, you know, yeah. and then they painted it. But now I have a deeper appreciation of the fact that you had to actually spend a lot of time staging it. And so that in itself is a little bit of an art form. And so, so you spent, you said several days staging it. Then how long did it take you to do actual painting? Actually, probably uh, many weeks of painting. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. And, and this, this painting is painted under, da under daylight conditions, you know. So I, as the painting progresses, you want to lock in the type of light you want to, you want the final light to, to be um, consistent. So if it's a cloudy day, but you're, you kind of want, want the painting to be painted under like a clear blue sky, then you won't paint on a cloudy day, especially as you finish the piece. So it can take, you know, there's probably, you know, consecutive hours. There's probably 80 to 100 hours of work in this, just wow. painting, you wow. know. So if I could do 40 hours a week, it would be two full weeks, but I, it really, you can't do 40 hours of painting in a week. The light conditions are too inconsistent. Right, right. Yeah. Well, so it, people don't realize that sometimes when they think painting is very fast and immediate, and sometimes it is, but um, these detailed still lifes, you know, oftentimes are, are many, like over 100, 100 hours of work in them, you know. Interesting. Yeah. And, and this is oil, I take it. This is oil, yeah. yeah. Oil and linen, yep. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. Well, great. Great. So, um, so I know you have several other pieces. Mm -hmm. So um, we'll take a little break, sure. and you'll put another piece, and we'll talk about it. All right. Yeah. Great. Great. So I see you have put my favorite piece from your website mm -hmm. up. Okay. So, so uh, please tell me about this one. Sure. Um, again, this you know this kind of comes back to the, the theme I have of uh, in some of my work, a lot of my work of like painting your life and. Um, I heard Billy Bra Bragg, the singer, refer to it as uh, surfing the zeitgeist, you know. So um, I was reading a book w at the time I painted this called Garbage Land. It was a, a book about um, 
garbage in, 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 in the U.S. and how it's disposed of and recycling and all that. And I was kind of was between paintings, and it's always hard for me to start a new one because I kind of need an idea that will hook me in. So um, I was drinking a lot of coffee and sitting over there on a chair trying to figure out what I would do, and the coffee cups were piling up. And I was reading this book, and the book was super interesting, you know. And um, then it struck me, you know, that, that, that here I'm reading this book about, like, the huge amount of waste produced in America, the millions of tons. I mean, in the way, it's, in the, it's in the world, right? It's, it's human beings. And uh, I kind of turned that lens of, upon myself, you know, and, and said, well, how much am I producing? And, I mean, I have a to-go cup. But I still, like, these cups still started piling up, you know. Um, I often bring my coffee from home. So I gathered up all the cups that I had. And again, I like a personal connection to the objects when I'm doing a still life. And I arranged them like this. And I um, actually spent quite a bit of time, you know, arranging it. These are tied up, and they would be glued in places. And, you know, I, I'll, you know I'll punch holes and stuff, and, and then sew it back into the background so so again they're not hand they, i would play around with how they hang uh, quite a bit um until i got like the shape that i wanted and uh, i would introduce some kind of in incongruous elements into it like this like this is actually a, like a little bracelet you know it, it doesn't really make sense in the context of the piece but um and another thing is, you know, being a still life painter, um, when I go to still life shows, I, I would often see what I would describe as the tyranny of the tabletop, you know. Um, a lot of still lifes are just painted on a tabletop, every single one of them. So I'm really drawn to the, um, I'm drawn to like when, when stuff hangs, I think that, that it, it almost, um, it arranges itself. I mean, you still have to arrange the levels, but it, it arranges very differently to like a flat tabletop where you're kind of looking into the space. So um, quite a few of the still lifes I've done, I've used this format. Um, so it, it kind of ties into that. And, and you know, I, I, I named the piece, it has a pun, which is America runs on Dumpin' as, as opposed to the Dunkin' Donuts slogan, America runs on Dunkin'. But it's not a, it's not a, a dig at Dunkin' Donuts. It's, it's um, it's it, again. I was kind of focusing that, that that lens on myself about how much I consume and how much, even though I consider myself relatively conscientious, you know, even a short period of time, you can amass a huge quantity of of uh, garbage, you know. So, and it was it was very challenging to paint. I have to say, the um, all these angles and these ellipses and and things and stuff like that were were very difficult. But uh, yeah, I like this piece. Yeah. What. Well I have to say, I mean, I, I'm really impressed because I, I, I'm, I'm looking through the viewfinder here. I mean, so it's a 2D representation, mm -hmm. I mean, and then TV tends to flatten things out mm -hmm. even more. And still, it is compellingly 3D to me as I pan down. It's like it's like they it's like they're really hanging there. I mean, uh, this this is it, it's just impressive as a piece itself, even factoring out, you know, the the elements of which is composed, you know, these everyday, mm -hmm. you know, common objects you know, uh, uh, of our consumer life. You know, so excellent. Very, very Thank nice. You. Thank nice. you. Uh, yeah. So um, let's take a look at another piece. Sure. So, John, this one seems to be uh, uh, a bit on the black and white side. Mm -hmm. and, uh, mm -hmm. Is that an uh, important component of the piece? or? Yeah, this is a pencil. Uh -huh. um, this is done in pencil, and um, uh, in the training I did as, as an artist, we worked in charcoal a lot. And pencil, pencil's not, you know, pencil gets shiny when you when you get it very dark. So I figured out a way to to get over that problem. But um, I got a, 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 a very, I became interested in like the craft of the pencil. Like the Japanese make these uh, incredible pencils, and there's these blogs where people analyze pencils, how much can be paired off of it, you know, in a, in a sharpener and without the wood, you know, the Excelsior, whatever they call it, br breaking. And um, so I kind of bought j Japanese pencils when I was into pencils. And, I wa and I've worked a lot of, like, very detailed pencil drawings. Um, this piece was, um, you know, I'd collected some seashells and I'd gotten some from my father-in-law. And uh, I kind of like the... The, the the abstract setup. I just wrapped the shells in like pieces of paper, 
you know, I kind of scrunched paper around them. And it has all the elements that, that um, like a traditional realist art does, which is like forms, you know, where you're creating depth and space and volume, and edges where you're kind of creating these sharp kind of points of focus that pop stuff out. Um, but the shape is kind of abstract. A lot of times it takes people a couple of minutes to see because, you know, the shells are broken exactly what it is and it's 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 some people are kind of confused about well why is it and and to me even though I work in a realist mode um, there's always an abstract um, element to the work you know in the sense that the the, um, the conception of it is it can be abstract the, the it, it doesn't necessarily need to represent anything um, now, I know an abstract painter would look at this and say, you know, baloney, it's, it's, it's a realist representation. But, you know, I, in this, I, my concerns are like f form, edge, light, uh, volume. The other thing, around about the time I was started to do these, uh, these pencil drawings, I went to see a show at the MFA by um, a Spanish artist called Antonio Lopez Garcia. And he does these incredible paintings of Madrid. He'll spend sometimes years painting Madrid in a certain light. Uh, he also did uh, a lot of pencil work. And I noticed in his pencil work that he, um, he would often like stick other pieces of paper. When he made a mistake, he might cut out another piece of paper and stick it onto the pencil, you know, onto the paper, and then continue as if there was no tear in the paper and there was, there was nothing there. And the pieces worked. And, and for me, I, I, I have an element like that in it, which is this kind of shadow in here, which was a hanger, which everything was hanging from. And I think I took it out, or I didn't like it, or something like that. And, and um, it was kind of like freeing to have seen this guy at the MFA would leave you know, the, his design lines in and his measurements in. And I didn't really feel I had to correct it till it was perfect. So that's one of the things that I like about the piece, is that it, you can kind of see some of the the old idea, you know, this is an old idea in here that I had that I kind of went over, but um, couldn't quite take out. But I, 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 I like leaving it in there so you can see that the, the, thing, the thing isn't constructed as this perfect idea. It's actually a process until you get it right, you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, that's that piece. Yeah, no, I, I like that aspect of it too. I mean, uh, and, and at the risk of analogizing too much, I mean, it's almost like, you know, I, our bodies have scars. Yes, you know, right, right, uh, right, from the yeah. various you know um, yeah. episodes, accidents, whatever in our yeah. lives, mean, and and uh, we they pack some memories in them. And sometimes they're good. Sometimes yeah. you know they're yeah. not so yeah. good, but nonetheless they are part of us. You know that we carry with us. So uh, I like cool. that image actually. That the, the 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 memory that the piece has memories of you know past events in it. That's pretty neat. I like yeah. that. Yeah. Cool. Well, um, so um, let's see another piece. Sure. So it looks like you have sort of three pieces now. Mm -hmm. oh. So um, I've always, I've always done a little bit of landscape painting. It's when you, it's great to get out of the studio um, and that control that you have in the studio and get outdoors and have the wind blow you around and people come up and talk to you. Um, but one of the things that I've in, probably enjoyed painting the most have been uh, cows, which I, which are out in the Minutemen National Park in uh, Concord and, and Lincoln. And um, I, I, I've spent hours out there sketching them. I sketch them a lot in pencil, um, paint them, you know, fi finish the paintings. The neat thing about them is that sometimes they'll sit down for as, m as long as like 45 minutes and they, they kind of pose for you. And uh, you can get these great, to me, you know, just interesting shapes. Cows have... Uh, you know they're so bony and so angular and they're so kind of evolved for what they're doing that they to me they, it kind of became fascinating and I read books on the history of cattle and beef and stuff like that um, the other thing about cows is you know they, they they're definitely a shape right so when I painted this thing I you know I had two cows here and I, I wanted another one so I took one and I just flipped it over you know so I, um, there was never three of them like this. There was two. I had two, but I was able to do that because they're kind of, sh they're just about a shape, you know. Um, and I, I think I think that th th that um, uh, this was this this is an evening one painted in, in the evening, and I kind of you know when I paint these things like this, I I 
I look for designs and I run them together, you know, like this, like I'll accentuate the S curve kind of coming through here. And, you know, I'll run the horns in here, even though that may not have been exactly the poles or it may have been just for a second. That's, you know, one of the things you, you know, you'll do when you're painting. Um, and this is probably my favorite recent painting that I did. This cow literally sat for 45 minutes right in front of me and I was in a rush and I painted it with a palette knife and I just got it as fast as I could. And, um, you know, the fact that the paint technique is so crude, like it, it replicates the cow's shaggy fur, you know, like uh, visually. So um, th th when, you, when I paint something like this, it kind of, it reminds me why I like to paint. You, this is when you, you know, you get a lot of joy from, from uh, a piece of work. I was, I was reading an, an article about a, a friend of mine recently who was a writer, and in it he said that, um, he, he, he writes for the sheer joy of writing, you know? And I, I don't write, I find it hard to write, and I think that's the reason I don't, I don't, I don't find joy in it. But when I painted these, I, I find, I, I find um, you know, I get that joy, and I, I kind of, it brings me back to why I'm, why I'm attracted to painting. But I, I love this piece. So the, I gather that unlike uh, the still lifes that we talked about, yeah. uh, especially the first piece, these were done pretty quickly? Correct, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Quickly, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the whole thing was done quickly, or did you like do the, the rough version of it, and then you spent maybe more time later on finishing uh, it? I, I would have done a little bit of time in the studio on most of these, but I find with outdoor work, if I don't capture the kind of essence of it outdoors, I won't be able to do it indoors, you know? So if I don't have, if I don't have, like when I, when I had, when I was bringing this in, from the, the, the field and brought into my studio, it, it already looked like it was like 90% of the way there. The same with these. If it wasn't, I, I know that it wouldn't matter how much time I give it in the studio, it wouldn't, it wouldn't like round out. Um, so like these three pieces had, I actually had something in my hand by the time I left, you know, the, stu the, 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 the field that I was in, you know. Um, but you don't know, I, I, I probably, tr destroy more than half of what I do outdoors because I don't, I don't, I'm not able to capture it in the, in the limited amount of time it passes me by. Um, yes. They're frustrating days, but this was not a frustrating day. This was just perfect painting day, you know? So that's the cows. So, uh, so um, I'm trying to <laughs> verbalize uh, <laughs> the question I have. Uh, Do you find that you approach, well, clearly you approach things differently when you have less time to do it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, um, and in the bottom piece, you had a lot of fun doing it. Mm -hmm. and, um, and do you feel that you get different things um, when you paint, out of the experience, when you paint quickly versus when uh, you spend weeks doing a piece? Let me rephrase this. Mm -hmm. and, um, do you find that you value the pieces differently based on how much time they take you to do them? Um, I would say, yeah, there's, certain, there's that element, all right. If you, if you spend an awful lot of time at the piece, um, you, you, can, you can value it more. But, you know, the, I don't know who said it. One of the kind of great painters said it takes two people to paint the piece one person to paint it and the other person to tell them when to stop painting. So that's one of the things I noticed with my, my, my still, still life. So sometimes you can actually take it too far. You can spend too much time on it. I think one of the, one of the lessons you take from working outdoors is that you have to, you, it's, it's that impression can be the, the essence of the piece, not necessarily the details. Like if I put whiskers on this cow and did every little hair, it wouldn't actually improve the piece. So, um, uh, I, as I work on a piece, yeah, I'll have that value depending on how much time, but as I get ta distance from the piece, you know, when I, like, some of these pieces are three or four years old, I kind of forget how much time I put into them. Then they, I, I just look at them, as, you know, for their intrinsic value. Do I like the piece? Is it well executed? You know, was the idea I was after? Did it hold up after a year? So um, it changes, I suppose, as, as time goes on. That's interesting yeah. about the whole, you know, it takes two people, one to tell one when to stop. Yeah. Because I would associate that more with writing. 
that was painting. Yeah, that's yeah. really interesting. Yeah, that that uh, that that's a phenomenon in painting. It also. sure is. Yeah, uh, I get it. It sure is. All right. So, um, a, I'm assuming that there's more to see. Yeah. Okay. More, yeah. So we'll take a look at another piece or so. Sure. It looks like we're uh, still doing animal life. That's right. Mm -hmm. um, so while I was painting the cows, you know, um, uh, there was a gentleman driving up and down the street. Uh, Tony Marugal is his name. He lives out in uh, Lincoln. He has a horse farm. And uh, he was watching me paint, and he invited me to his f come down to his farm to look at his horses and see if I was, you know, he left it up to me if I was interested in painting. And I said I was. I had so much fun painting the cows that I said, okay, I'll, I'll try a horse. And um, it kind of broke my heart, to be honest. So, so whereas I was able to capture the cows sometimes, you know, in, in one sitting outdoors but, and bring it into the studio and finish it and in, in like maybe give it another hour and like tidy it up or what have you. The horse has been the complete opposite. Um, the horse never stops moving like the cow. It just, it just never stops. And it proves incredibly difficult to, uh, to sketch it you know, in the field. And I did, I, I, I went from trying to sketch it in oil painting to like doing inks and pencil as fast as I can. And I, I got, I probably got a few hundred sketches of it, you know, but um, most of the work on, on this was done in the studio. And I, it, you know, again, there's probably 80, this is like, it has been like a still life for me with the amount of time I put into it. So for a landscape, and it's, it's drying in now, I haven't varnished it yet, but, um, this is kind of the most recent thing I've been done. But a horse is about movement, you know, and if you don't have the movement, you don't have the horse, you know. So whereas the cow is about shapes, uh, like if a horse, like draw, a drawing a very s static horse just standing there, it, 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 it doesn't have, I don't know, not, to me it wasn't interesting. And I tried, you know, several poses with other paintings of the horse just standing there. So this, this one is the one that's worked the best for me, which is the horse, you know, moving. And, um, you know, I, I pushed the background into this side of the horse and that side of the horse. So it's kind of, it, it kind of, it's, it's, a, it po it, it's an effect where he's getting pushed back in and moving forward at the same time. And it gives it a bit of motion. And, um, but this was a painting where, I was actually, I didn't know how to paint it, to be quite honest. I had no idea how to paint, how to get a result. And, you know, to your earlier question about how much t time would I put into an outdoor piece or, or um, any piece, sometimes I actually don't know how to get the end result, but I'll, I'll maybe I can analyze it enough and I'll know when I'm close or, I'll, you know, I'll talk to my studio mate and he'll tell me to stop. Um, so this is essentially finished now, but it, it was uh, very difficult, and I really didn't know how to, how to get it to this point. Um, there was a lot of diversions, but it was fun to paint as well, and uh, it's, it was nice to be, you know, to be out of the studio and, and um, near this, like, magnificent animal. So that was my, my segue now has been from, from uh, cows to horses. Uh -huh. Who knows what's next? Well, Chickens, sheep. Well, it, it's it's nice. I mean, yeah. I like it, but but to the extent that you struggle with it, maybe the whole expression, you know, if, um, if you fall off the horse, you know, you need to <laughs> get on it again, yeah, yeah, you know, as quickly as possible. So let me just encourage you to do the horse piece if you want. To. Yes, yes, yeah. I think I might do another. Um, I might do another horse piece and see if I can. Uh, if I can pull it off in a little bit of a shorter time, if I've learned anything from doing this, you know. But um, we'll see. Okay. We'll see. And um, is there more to see? Yeah, a right. more. Great. So we'll take a look at something else. Sure. Okay, John. So uh, with this piece, it looks like we're still outside. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so um, this is from, I want to show this because it's painted in town, you know. And, um, uh, you know, it, it was something I was, it's always hard to find a, 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 an outdoor piece. But... This house is on the entry to Route 2, just on the, the, the on-ramp. And um, it's kind of the nicest house with the worst location maybe. But the, um, I really loved the way the sun was kind of hitting the roof, you know, and it created these like uh, 
these light patches, these kind of abstract, abstract shapes. And that's what drew me to it. And I kind of painted this over two mornings. Um, and uh, I don't know, it was, I don't know, maybe 8 o'clock in the morning, this, this house gets sun on the roof. And it's kind of a dark roof, but whatever, whatever time of year it was, it just kind of lit up. It, it, um, and I've always liked it. Again, it was done kind of fast. And, you know, this, this house is within walking distance of where I live. And what I, I think what I like about it is it could be anywhere. You know, this house could be in, in France or it could be in Norway or it could be in uh, Idaho. But, uh, you know, because a lot of it is left out, you know, the, 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 there's nothing really to give away the location. Yeah. Um, well, I'll but tell it you, is Arlington, you know? Yeah, I can tell you, it wouldn't be in New Orleans. <laughs> it's as, not New Orleans, though? As, as a New Orleanian. Okay, you know, so, okay. so, so, uh, uh, but I, I get you. I just yeah. had to make that little joke. Yeah, yeah. my uh, uh, architectural knowledge is uh, it's not comprehensive, I suppose. But, um, yeah, so that's, that's uh, you know, when I can't, if I, if I can get a nice local painting, it's always fun, you know? Yeah. I did a nice one of Spy Pond a few years ago, which I... Uh, Sold, but it's very nice. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Okay, so, so um, another piece. One more piece, yeah. All right, John. So, um, looks like we have another still life. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, tell me more about it, please. So, um, this one I did some years ago. My sister was getting married, and um, she lives in Spain. And uh, I, you know, I wanted to connect like some Irish culture with her new location. So um, this is a painting by the Spanish painter Soroya. I added like a postcard of it. And it's actually a painting of um, the town she lives in. She lives in, in San Sebastian and this is called I think Las Rampelianas or something like that which means the waves or the breakers and it's famous for surfing in waves and stuff like that. So I thought it was neat that I could actually get a, a painting. I mean it was done a hundred years ago. Um, or more by Soraya, and then I put in like this, you know, Irish tea, which is the kind of contemporary uh, product in Ireland, and um, it kind of pulled in both elements of, you know, her her new family, which was like the Irish and the Spanish. Um, so that's another thing I kind of like to do, which is, um, uh, you know, again, pull in. Um, elements of contemporary culture uh, and have some sort of personal connection to it. So this, this piece hangs in my, in my kitchen at, at home and you know these are my teacups and I painted, I actually painted it twice and I gave one, one to my um, sister and I kept this one. But I used to joke with my kids because um, when, when they would say, wow dad, that's, how did you paint that? That's very realistic. And uh, I would joke with them that when I first brought it into the house that, that um, the sugar bowl was so well painted that a stream of ants started crawling up and trying to get into it. <laughs> and they would, like, when they were very young, they believed me, you know. I was, I was like, it was for two days, ants were trying to get into the sugar bowl until they figured out it was a painting. Um, but they're a bit old, old for those jokes now. But um, I still, anytime I have a young kid come into the house, I'll always, I'll always take out that old chestnut and it gives me a laugh at least, I suppose. Well, I mean, as someone who, who, who doesn't paint, dare I say can't paint, uh, uh, I, I'm just impressed with just how realistic they are. And, uh, and, and I, I love the painting of the painting. Uh, that, that's very cool. And I can't say that I recall seeing that. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm sure it's not the first time it's been done, but, mm -hmm. but uh, I like that element of it. And, uh, and, and also something the camera's picking up very nicely is the brown material um, behind the hanging um, cups and teapot, mm -hmm. and uh, that's very nice. Yeah. Cool. Oh, yeah. yeah, cool. Thanks for sharing. And uh, so, so um, something else? Sure. Excellent. Yeah. So it looks now like we have two versions of the same um, piece. Mm -hmm. So I think often, like when I'm working, even if, if I don't want to finish drawing, I'll always draw the piece first when I'm doing a painting. Um, even outdoors, I'll try and have a, a, a pencil sketch. This is more finished pencil sketch, so I kind of I kept it. And um, my idea when I was doing this was that I would I would I would draw the setup, um, 
and then when I painted it, I would no longer look at the setup. I kind of wanted to get away from like the direct observation um, because I feel I'd observed it enough sketching it in, in pencil. So, I mean, this is a way to, for me to keep kind of things interesting rather than always having, I don't always have the same approach to a piece. Uh, and this one, it was like a little bit of a departure. Once I had the piece drawn, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't observe the original piece anymore. Um, the piece is called Broken, and it's, it, you know, I was, I, I drove my wife crazy. I started keeping eggshells as we cooked eggs, you know. And you'd be surprised in, you know, a, m a month or what have you, you know, we have a family of four, um, how many dozens of cartons of eggs you end up with in eggshells and, and, um, I kind of like the metaphor as well of, you know, breaking stuff to eat it, and and um, and of course eggs are have a traditional subject in art for, you know, hundreds of years. They're very interesting to paint, kind of like flowers. So you have to break some eggs to make some art. There you go. Uh -huh. There you go. Um, so this is the painted piece, and um, again, I I I I I, I try to not look at the the original setup when I did it. And um, it's framed a little differently, and it departs, I suppose, a little bit from the original. But um, it was, you know, it was it was a, di a little bit of a different approach for me to to not observe the original piece. Um, but the actual setup for this is over here, and um, this is something I painted under studio light, not natural light, because I set up, you know, I had a, 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 a light shining down on these kind of creating these dramatic shadows. And um, again, I've departed from this like tabletop uh, still life um, mode. Um, f for me, this is almost like, you know, creating a sculpture, you know, th these eggs are glued to sculpture wire and glued to each other. So I actually had kind of, uh, with, this, with this piece, I probably spent six or seven hours actually creating the piece that I was going to draw and paint, um, you know, setting up the cloth, setting it up on the board, arranging the eggs in a, in a way that I liked. And, you know, I'm trying to get angle, I'm trying to get edges in the right place and lights in the right place. And um, of course, they're all the same color, which is a challenge, you know, and, it, and it's, you know, white on the inside, but white in shadow. So um, I spent actually a lot of time constructing it, and it's actually, I've bumped it a couple of times, so it's actually starting to crumble onto the floor. But, um, you know, to me it was a, actually as, almost as interesting to, to assemble this, you know. Um, I'd be, I think I'd be pushing it to call it a sculpture, but it was, you know, it was, it was, it was fun to put it together. It was kind of part of the creative process, I think, as well, to actually create the subject out of these broken eggshells. Um, and then to go on and do uh, render it in a more traditional fashion in pencil and, and uh, in, uh, in oil paint. So I don't know what I'm going to do with it now because um, it's extremely delicate. So I'm going to have to take it down soon because I'm finished with it. Uh, well, it's interesting. You know, you say it's pushing to call it a sculpture. And maybe that is the case, but I see it as a sculpture. And, and when you said sculpture, that actually reminded me of how I felt about the hanging coffee cups, mm -hmm, they, mm -hmm. it to me had that sculpture feel, it was like a, a painting of a sculpture, you know, and so, so um, well, this, these are all, all very, very, very impressive, very cool, and, and, and I appreciate all the insight, you know, that you've given me about mm -hmm. uh, your art and what, you know, goes into making your art, so once again, thank you very much, John. You're welcome.